Let's work on the concept of chi-square test on independence in this video. And in the, in, the, in the first video, we're gonna work on the intuition behind the test. In the next video, we're gonna work on the math behind it. So what's the setting here? We have, uh, we have a company that produces detergent and it packages and it packages in two different colors, blue and pink. Suppose this purple here is pink because I didn't have a better color. And we also have ratings, three different ratings, poor, normal, and good. And now the intuition is that can there be a relationship between the package of the color and the rating that consumers give? Because we think that maybe consumers like uh, pink products, pink uh, packages more than blue, and it's more likely for them to give a higher rating. And for us, for the marketeers in the team, if we know that, then we're uh, obviously going to produce more pink products and we're going to have a better rated product on the market. So this is quite practical. This makes sense to test. Now, in statistics, in hypothesis language, what does that mean? It means that under the null hypothesis, we have no relationship between, between color and rating. So color and rating. But then the alternative hypothesis, if that's rejected, then we would assume that we have a relationship between the two. So I'm just gonna write relationship between all of that, color and rating. Now, if we have no relationship between the color and the rating, if the color of the package does not affect how consumers rate it, then we would expect to have a certain value which is equal or at least similar to the value that we observe in reality. So just like before with chi-square, we will compare expected and observed values. But the question is, how can we calculate these expected values? And let's go through the intuition behind it. Here we can see that we have 500 500 blue packages and here we have a thousand pink packages so in total we have 1500 packages now let's look at the ratios what is 500 out of 1500 well that's a third a third of the packages are blue so we got a third of the packages that are blue meaning that the remaining two over three are pink so we have two over three packages that are pink now with this logic in mind, how can we calculate the expected values? And let's calculate the expected values in a separate table here below. So if we want to calculate the expected values of these ratings. So expected, expected values. Now if 1 over 3, which is 33%, out of the total packages are blue, then looking at the packages that get a poor rating, we would expect to have 33% out of the 225 total poor ratings. So in other words, to have blue packages that also get the rating of poor, we would expect to have 1 over 3 out of 225 uh, packages that have poor rating. And if we do the math over here, that's 223, 225 divided by 3, which is equal to 75. Now with the same logic, let's think about the pink case. So in the case of the pink, for the pink packages that get a poor rating, we would expect to have two over three out of the total poor uh, ratings to be pink. So two over three out of 225, which would equal to, let me just do it here real quick in the calculator, two over three times two to five would equal to 150. 150 and we can see that the math works out the math works out to the total number total number of poor uh, poor uh, products poor ratings I'm sorry with the same logic let's have a look at the expected values for goods with a normal rating when they are blue and when they are pink so out of the total products that get a normal rating we expect to have a third of them of blue color so we would expect to have with a normal rating blue packages 1 over 3 out of 375 which would be equal to 125 now with the same reasoning we could calculate them for the pink products which would be 2 over 3 out of the 375 number of packages with normal uh, rating and that would equal to 250 and we can have a look at the math that it works out again to the same number to 375 
so 375. And for the last column, for the last group, let's use the same reasoning. For the packages with a good rating, in total there are 525, so in total there are 525, we expect, in expectation, we have a third of them of blue color, so a third out of 525, which is equal to, let me do it here real quick, 175. 175 and for the other column for the pink packages we expect to have out of 525 two-thirds of it so two-thirds out of 570 sorry out of 525 must equal to 5 to 5 times 2 over 3 350 so that should be 350 and again the math works out to the same number so the math works out to the value of 525 now, to generalize what we just did, let's give a formula for the expected value. And let's, let's do it here below, make some space. So the general formula that we can see in statistics, in, uh, in uh, books and so on, it's given like that. It's the expected value of a certain uh, cell, for instance, blue and poor or blue and normal and so on. These are called cells. Is the row times the column divided by the number of observations. And if we solve it, for instance, let's do it for one cell to prove that is the point, to prove that is the point, the expected value for this cell, we found out to be 75. Let's see if that works out. We would multiply the row, which is 500 over here, times the column, which is 225, divided by the total of 1500. And if we do it, I'm doing it with the calculator right now, it's 500. 500 times um, 225 divided by 1500, it's equal to 75. It's equal to 75. So it's the same thing as we found out. The reason, the reason I wanted to go you through this type of reasoning is because this makes intuitive sense. If we have a third probability that we're going to have blue packages, it means that from every group of rating, from poor, normal and good, we expect to have a third of the uh, products to be blue and two-thirds to be pink and that's re literally shown in the same formula over here but it's not as uh, intuitive to notice right away what we did is that we divided first the row divided by total so here we found out the percentage and then we allocated to every column to every group of rating so we get to the same number however this is this is the intuition behind it how we go from from here to the actual values in the cells now, this was it with the intuition. In the next video, we're going to see how exactly we're computing the chi-square and give a conclusion.